What's up everybody? So today in this video what I'm going to be showing you is how to sync up your Google Calendar events and your Airtable database. So if you're interested in that, stick around. If you haven't met me before, my name is Ben Green. I'm the owner of Optimize IS and what we do is we help you optimize your information systems. So that's in stuff like Airtable for asset management, a CRM, lots of reporting, or Asana for project management, Slack for communications. You can check the link in the description and request a consultation from me or someone on my team. Without further ado, we'll get right in the video now. So as you can see, we're in the sales CRM and the sales CRM doesn't necessarily matter. But basically what you're going to end up having is you're going to have one table with just a ton, tons of Google Calendar events. So you can get historic Google Calendar events in here. And I'm going to show you how to do all of that right now. So if I come up here to add a new table, one feature that Airtable just added is they added all these options right here. So that's great. They added like easy ways to import data. But what they also added was now you can sync data not only from an Airtable base, but from Jira Cloud, Google Calendar, as well as Box. Now, what I'm gonna be showing you is how to sync from Google Calendar. So if I click Google Calendar, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select Google Calendar event. Now, I already have one created in here, or one connected in here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna connect a new account. So when that opens up, it'll open up this login window. And so I'll use a different account. I'll use one of my one of my really old emails and then I'll connect that now and then show you what to do next. So after you connect your account, what you can do is you can just click on that Google Calendar account that you just added. So I'll click that one and now what you're gonna do is you're gonna select your Google Calendar. So I'll select mine and what I'm gonna choose, I'm just gonna choose uh, holidays in the United States because I'm not gonna actually pull in my Google Calendar events because then you'd see all of them. Uh, so I'll just use holidays in the United States and now you can pick the date range to start So maybe I want to go back all the way we can we can go back really far if we want So I'm gonna go back a while so we get lots of dates in here. So I want from August 1st 2014 uh, to today, so We'll do that and now we'll click next through here So you pick your start pick your end and now click next So now what it's gonna do is it's going to have all fields in the source and fields added in the future. So you can either do that or you can choose the specific fields. So these are all the fields that it'll give you, uh, just stock ones. So I'm gonna choose specific fields so I can show you what that looks like. So in here we can see the title of the event, start and end date, is it all day, creator, status, location, and all of this. So what's really important for us in here is gonna be this these attendees right here. So we'll add all of these maybe besides like the that one and that one because we don't need these links in here so now you have two options here so automatically sync at regular intervals so we can change that if we want to but we really want it to be syncing up as much as we can so we're going to leave on this automatically sync changes at regular intervals and we can also have it delete records when they're deleted in google calendar so if there's a how something in my holidays calendar uh, that's deleted then we can have a delete in here as well so now we'll go ahead and create this table what you'll notice is it has this little synced you all the sync tables have something here at the beginning uh, and it's usually the little optimize is symbol uh, or better known as like these uh, lightning bolts so or the optimize is logo but here you can see it's a google calendar so that's perfect so now if we just pull myself over here we can see there's so many uh, there's 41 holidays since let's see looks like some of these are just for 2019 so I don't have a lot of historical data in my Google Calendar obviously but it pulled a good amount of these in from 2019 uh, to 2021 so that's fantastic and now what you can do is you can just let this be so that's one way to do it. Another way to do it is you might want to be linking up to a contact in like if you had a, one of your attendees in here and their email was right here, then what I would do, obviously there's no other attendees on these holidays in the United States, but what I would do is I would insert a field to the right here and I would link to the contacts table. So when you do that, you know, I won't add any lookup fields in here but you can now say when a record is added in this table so if i come up here and do an automation uh, like when a 
record is we could we could say updated or added uh, but just when your record matches conditions in this uh, let's see the holidays in the United States and we'll just say that only condition is that the title is not empty and I guess you you'd probably for this example you would probably want a uh, the attendees to not be empty so you can run that test and then you can click done there and we'll just pretend like that's like there's something that it, it failed because there's nothing in this attendees field here so if I take that off it'll it'll run good uh, but now we can click done and then what you want to do is you just want to update that record so it will give you the record ID so we'll pull in that from the step one in here and then what you can do is uh, make sure you select your table so holidays in the United States and then the only field that you'll actually be able to update um, and I guess I can try like uh, one of these other ones but what you want to do is if you have their emails in here and their emails are also the primary field in this contacts table so in here they're not but if they were then what you could do is you could then pull in the information from step one and you could pull in the attendees so if I can find the attendees somewhere in here then I would insert that right there and it should link up now obviously I don't have the greatest data in here to show you that actually working so if I ran the test there'd be nothing that goes in there but it'll say successful so that's one way of syncing up not only syncing up your Google Calendar with Airtable uh, because this will update like if I was to add a holiday in the United States in that calendar in my Google Calendar it would add a field in here um, but this will also take it a step further and it will link it up to your contacts table in whether it's your sales CRM that could also be like your project manager and it'll do that automatically based on this field being uh, not empty so again one thing people usually commonly miss in here is that in your contacts table to make this work if there's emails in the attendees then the primary field would have to be an email which is a unique identifier and so that way you can it basically it essentially just takes uh, the email and pastes it in this contacts right here and then it automatically links up you can do roll-ups you can do lookups and everything like that so I'm not going to go into like how to send yourself a daily digest although I could see that being very useful a daily digest of your events for the day but maybe that can be a different video. You can throw it in the comment section if you want like a daily digest based on this of your events for today. But what I just mentioned was one of the most common Airtable mistakes. So if you are curious on learning uh, the most common Airtable mistake that I see people making, then I would go check out this video on the end screen right here. It's gonna walk you through the three most common Airtable mistakes uh, with the, the unique identifier being one of them. And then the rest really will take your Airtable database to the next level. But I highly encourage you to just go watch that video in the end screen right there. Just click on that video. There should be a square. It should have the thumbnail right there. You can go learn about the three biggest mistakes that Airtable users make uh, when implementing a database in their Airtable workspace. So without further ado, I'll see you in the next one and have a great day.